It's a hot summer day and you come back to your car parked in the sun with the windows all the way up without even a little tiny crack to let the heat out. You get in and instantly begin to sweat. I can see him starting to sweat. The seats are even radiating heat. So you blast the AC in an attempt to cool off before you melt. But how long do you have to suffer until you're comfortable? This is still melting all over me. To get to the bottom of this, we're gonna set up a test to find out. Welcome to Carvana Car Labs. To fully understand this experiment, we first need to know how an AC actually works. And there are two main science principles at play. Number one, when a surface goes from the liquid phase to the gas phase, it takes heat with it, leaving the surface behind cooler. Number two, in the opposite fashion, when a substance is compressed and goes from the gas phase to the liquid phase, heat is generated. This results in higher molecule movement and thus heat, because that's actually what heat is. All right. Now let's combine all of these principles into one machine and call it an air conditioning system. Here's how it works in your car. We start this process with a refrigerant gas called R134A. This refrigerant gas is first compressed into a liquid which creates heat. Now this is done outside the cabin of the car specifically because it's producing heat. Next, the liquid is pumped back inside the car and allowed to decompress. This decompression or evaporation happens inside a closed set of tubes with fins that resembles a radiator. When this happens, we get coldness. A fan is then blown over this cold radiator and we get air conditioning. Okay, so let's get some data on the cars we're gonna be testing. We're first gonna be measuring the overall surface area of our vents for our vintage reading. Next, we're gonna measure the top wind velocity that each of these systems can deliver. Like, I, I thought this might happen. The Audi had like really small space, but it's pushing really hard. So here's a recap of the numbers. Uh, as far as vintage is concerned, the Volvo is the leader by far. We have 276 centimeters squared. The Lexus came in at 204 centimeters squared, and the Audi came in at 115.5 centimeters squared. That's just one metric. It's the next key metric, actually, is how powerful that wind is coming at you. The Volvo, we have a 13.5 potential AC cooling factor. The Lexus is 10.4 and the Audi is 6.5. Now, what we could have done is we could have just taken the air temperature and multiplied that by the wind speed. That would have told us how much cold air is coming at us. What we're really concerned about is what it feels like to be the driver who so desperately just wants to get cool again in a hot car. How you feeling in there? Hot. <laughs> he said hot. We've set out cars to sit in the sun with the windows up for the same amount of time, two hours. We will then have a driver hop in for five minutes and then take three laps in our standardized course. We will be measuring their beginning temperature and recording their skin temperature with this IR camera and laser thermometer as they drive. Dang, bro, you're warm. What is it? 101. After the three laps, we will compare the beginning temperature to their finishing temperature. At like 95 now. And just to add a little excitement to the day, I'm gonna be holding an ice cream cone for the entire ride. Let's see what happens. Three laps, right? Yeah, so we'll go 50. Oh, no! Oh! We didn't even finish the oh, first lap. Oh no! We're gonna go ahead and throw Steven in the car, which is very warm. From the outside, we can see that it's over 120 degrees with our thermometer on the dash. The oven, get in the oven. It's definitely warm. 102.2, that's incredibly warm. Now the, oh no, oh no, it's, <laughs> it's already melting. It's already going down. Yeah, all right, last lap, here we, we go. go. We're almost there. I can see Home in the stretch. IR, you're actually already cooling off quite a bit. So let's see, your final temperature is 96. This is just would have been a mess had a child been eating this, as you can see. <laughs> How are you feeling, by the way? I'm doing all right already. Like, does this one feel different than the other one? Like, better, worse? I felt like I, I cooled down more. I was more cool than that one. Yeah. Like, I'm good, but I felt cooler. Got 98, 97. So certainly the chocolate uh, metric, it didn't do as good of a job. 
Uh, but also, with the IR, it didn't do as good a job. Yeah, it didn't yeah. feel as good. No, this is feeling good. Do you feel good on this one? Yeah, this one feels good. Oh, wow, okay, Probably yeah. because the air vents are a bit, they're a lot wider than the other one, so I feel like more air is yeah. hitting me all at once. Okay, so definitely had some drippage. Uh, we ended, though, at 96 degrees. Uh, on the laser thermometer. Where would you put this one? I would say this one is coolest. Yeah? For sure, yeah. Okay. Yeah. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna add up all the numbers and we're gonna see which one had the highest cooling potential for real after sitting in a really hot car that was over 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, in third place, we have the Audi with a five degree differential. The Volvo came in second at a differential of 6.3 degrees. What actually lowered your temperature the most was the Lexus at 7.5 degrees Fahrenheit. What we learned is that wind speed has a really large effect on the cooling factor, but the car that was the coolest was the Lexus.